On the left here is a, li a link to get you to a list of training videos. They're all basic. Everyone here, you all know your custom. Everyone here has something unique about you, um, other than, you know. So basically, all of this stuff is basic. It's not going to cover any of the customizations or anything we did, but it gives you the basics. If you have a new employee or someone that's trying to do something, just needs to familiarize their, themselves with the basics of how do I do something. Um, the training videos are out there. You can certainly access them. I think they're five minutes or less? Five and 15 each. Oh, five and 15 minutes each. They're not really anything crazy time intensive. But it's also just, you know, when, you, when you're learning, um, it's a great way to go in and see what's going on. So that is online help. Uh, the other things, I just want to kind of just cover like the common, common things that I see in support that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis um, and kind of give you the, I don't want to call them my secrets because they're not secret, but how I figure things out. Because I figure if I can share with you what I do, then maybe you guys can do it, and then it'll make your life easier when you're trying to figure out things. And, you know, my goal is to not give anybody gray hair, so we want everybody to be happy. So, under report, one of the most common, common things is... Yeah. One of the help site is the workstation set up guys this one thing. Oh, it's on our help or on our website? In the help. You'll learn something new every day, right? We also have the workstation set up on our website, which is typically the link I send to most everybody. Um, so, which actually probably has changed now that you have the website. Yeah. Okay, so, the, one of the most common things that we get emails, calls about are, I ran my gross margin report, my numbers don't look right, you know, I don't know, heads or tails, what to do something doesn't look right. So if I run the gross margin report, okay, I just threw one out here for us just to kind of see. I know it looks a little funky. Looking from that, and it's oh, I have a problem. How come either your sales price is completely incorrect, or something happened in reference to your cost? It's like what what happened? Scrolling over, the report does give you the details on the costs that are posted. You can see that the full amount is against material. So, how do you research that? What do you do? Well, my favorite place. is venture analysis. So we're going to spend some time. I'm going to show you the ins and outs of venture analysis. Um, but basically, we want to be able to look and see what happened. But venture analysis kind of sums everything up. It pulls everything together, um, makes my life really easy because I can see everything. I really don't have to dig. When I do support, um, you know, we always have the database so we can cheat and look at things. But I try to do everything in the system like you guys would. So this way I would be able to tell you I did this, this, and this in order to get here. Um, so basically I would come here first. So the venture that was against this invoice was 136.11. And select call is by default, I don't think in the six years I've been here, I don't think I've checked anything other than that. So I just go with it and hit you venture. So coming in here, you can you have the first tab that's a summary. 
and the summary will give you your related projected cost, and then it gives you a breakdown of your quantities and what has happened. You ordered 2,500. You received actually 2,500. If you made any adjustments, up or down, and then it gives you the breakdown: how much you sold, how much is unsold. <laughs> this ship not build are is a quantity that's on a pending invoice. So if you haven't posted the invoice. That's what shows up on the ship not built down here in the box. You also have the ability, if you are working with multiple units of measures and you have your conversion set up, then you can change and look and see your different conversions. So in this, ca in this case, the venture is in pieces and there are conversions to these other units of measure. So you would be able to see the LPC, et cetera, in relation to the other units of measure. This is really, really common for a lot of you chemical metals, pounds and kilograms, and things like that. Um, scrolling down, you have your sales to date, the cost of sales, and then it gives you your like technically mini gross margin for this little venture here. And then it gives you an inventory value. So based on the amount that's left in inventory that's available to sell, that's your inventory value for the specific venture, which you can see this, of course, in 12 other reports of the system, but it's nice to kind of have it here. You don't have to search for it. Price and payment terms, I actually refer to a lot because this tells you the price per unit that's listed on the purchase order. You don't have to go back and look for it and see what did I enter on the purchase order, you know, what's my problem, etc. So this actually tells me that it's $2.26 $2 per piece. So you can see that our LPC, our rate of projected cost is six dollars and seventy-eight cents. So that's kind of a little bit of a big difference. So something seems to have gone seriously wrong. Uh, accruals. If you guys have them, um, everybody by default has material and duty. Um, some of you have passed that more custom ones. There's the like Tim showed you yesterday. The um, estimated cost having containers is really popular. You'll just type it in. Past that, of course, there's people that have certain calculations and things like that. So in here, you're able to see if you had any more custom rules or these two rules. You can see that the amount you've accrued, the amount you've paid, and the current amount accrued for this venture. And actually, this must be one of the So basically, this is showing that there is an amount paid. 11,000, $11,300 has been paid against this vendor. And there's still amount accrued. So there is a really, there's a lot going on with this vendor. Basically, this seems completely off. So if you go to the cost tab, you can see the costs that have been posted against this vendor thus far. Whether they're inventoryable or non inventoryable your inventoryable cost is what goes against that LPC. Uh, non inventoryable costs, some people have the outbound freight that they pass on to the customer and things like that. That does not get included to the LPC. That you guys have control of in the cost types. So I will show you, we'll go into cost after this, and I'll show you how in the cost types you flag things inventory or that's really important when you're running your inventory valuation reports. If you have things flagged as inventoryable that shouldn't be, you're increasing the value of your ventures and your inventory um, with amounts that probably shouldn't be there. Or vice versa, you might have stuff that you're flagging non inventoryable that should be. So your inventory value is lower than what it should be. The key to this is actually when we go in there, I'll show you when you change that flag, if you had existing cost against it, it doesn't change anything old that you posted. It only would happen on anything current as well. So if any of you have that problem, we can we'll have to help you on the back end to fix that. But, but basically in here, it'll show you the inventory will cost, your non-inventory will cost, so you can see kind of where everything went. And you can see from here, there's a duplicate cost posted. But you see that there's a reference number. This is the vendor invoice number. You see the reference number is different. So in Visco, when you post a cost, we check against the vendor, 
the reference number in the amount, I believe. And that's how you get the duplicate invoice flag when you're posting costs. It pops up and says, you have another invoice posted for you know, these three criteria. Are you sure you want to do this? And then you check the checkbox. In this case, since the reference number was different, the customer didn't, whoever posted this didn't get flagged because I'm assuming it probably belongs to Venture 137 looking at the numbers. But. So this would be an easy fix. You would post a negative cost and then move it to where it should be. But this is showing us right here. You can see immediately that there's two costs posted. It shouldn't have been. So just to finish showing you Venture analysis, Venture sales shows you any invoices posted against this venture. So if they're pending, they don't show up here yet. Um, so you can see here that there were three invoices against, three invoices against this. You can see one actually looks like it was returned. You sold 2,500, it came back, and now we've resold it to someone else. You have the ability to click on the sales order number, a hyperlink so it'll actually pop up and allow you to view the sales order from the screen as well if you needed to. My other favorite part is here under links. There's this link here for capitalist. <coughs> Coming in here you're able to see multiple things. This gives you a breakdown of the inventory, what's happened with this venture quantity wise, things like that. This just gives you a general overview it looks a lot like that first summary screen we saw on the other page. Um, this is just a comments page. Um, but here you have the warehouse details. If you guys are dealing in packages, you know, um, drums, cases, things like that, you can see your package count or you can see your quantity. In this case, this one's venture level, so you don't see package count. But um, you can see your quantity sold, your quantity available. If you guys do warehouse transfers, there will be another tab in here for you to see the transfers from, to, quantity, date started, date received. But the other nice part is this adjustment log. I love this because it tracks any time a change is made. Quantity up, quantity down, the user, the date, um, if they made comments or not. So you're able to see if someone changed something or if there's a quantity issue with this venture, you're able to see what happened. We do have a feature. I don't know if any of you have it turned on. But if you do an inventory adjustment that is not a packing list entry, we can force the user to make a comment. Um, so that is one way you can force people to put in you know, what they're doing, why they're doing. If you guys are constantly having problems with inventory, changes like that, we also have the uh, quantity review pending too, which some of you, I think, might have used. So, this is. Um, which actually, I think she explained what that is too, in case other people might want to use it, is that on any inventory adjustments, if you want to, there, there can be an approval process. So, whether quantity goes up or down, if you want to, you can have it. Um, you can have it. When the adjustment goes in, it 